Every year, there are over 49,000 table saw injuries. It is the most common accident amongst woodworkers, and even with blade guards, the statistics show that it is still happening. In fact, by the time you have finished watching this video, there's a good chance that an accident would have already occurred and someone's on their way to the hospital. But these accidents are preventable, and for the last 20 years, SawStop have been developing the safest table saw with incredible reliability. The idea is simple. When the blade touches human skin, it detects, stops, and drops the blade under the table within five milliseconds. That's 10 times faster than an airbag and much faster than you can react without it. Which is why in this video, I'm going to be breaking down every feature of these saw stop table saws from build quality to their cutting capability, what I like and what I don't like, and I'll even be giving you my opinion as to which one of these two models I think you should buy. Let's get into it. And the two saws that I'm going to be reviewing today are this, the Jobsite Pro, as well as its little brother here, the compact table saw. And full disclosure, SawStop have sent me both of these saws to review. However, any regular viewers of this channel will know that that is not going to stop me from giving my honest opinion. As always, we're going to start off by looking at build quality and what is included in the box. <laughs> Both of these table saws come with an included push stick and they are exactly the same on both models. And looking at the saw, you might think that the push stick is the only accessory that you can actually see. And this is where saw stop have done something very clever. On the back of the compact table saw, you can simply turn this red lever to reveal the accessory pack, which will hold all of the accessories that come with the saw, as well as any optional extras that you might decide to buy, like a replacement brake that I've got in here. On the job site, I think it's even more impressive what you do is slide out your fence and this will reveal this hidden storage area here that just pulls out you can then lift up the latch and look at that you've got all of your accessories both models come with an included blade guard and i've got to say it's very easy to put in both of these saws come with one of these miter gauges and to be honest it's not particularly impressive it's exactly the same sort of quality that you would get out of something like the dewalt or evolution table saw that i have reviewed previously and both saws come with a riving knife included and originally i thought it came with a spare riving knife but actually it is for a different size blade so you've got one that does a 250 millimeter blade and then you've got the one that's on the saw already which does a 254 millimeter blade and both saws come with all of the allen keys that you will need and wrenches to either change the blade or make any calibrations the only other thing to mention is the job site table saw is the only one that's going to come with a rolling stand included. You can buy a stand for the compact. It's going to set you back £130. However, it is a static stand, which means that it doesn't have wheels. And for something that weighs so much, that's not ideal. heavy. Starting off with the compact, and it's fair to say that this saw comes with all of the features that you would expect from a modern day compact table saw. The rack and pinion system allows you to easily adjust the distance between the blade and the fence. And I've got to say, I really like the way that you actually lock this in by pushing the handle in. That's really nice. It's got a nice folding part of the fence. So if you are fully extended and you've got a long or wide piece of timber, then that piece of timber is going to be supported on that end. And one of my favorite things has got to be the easy way that you can adjust the angle of the blade by just squeezing and turning to the angle that you're looking for. You could also make micro adjustments by just twisting this outer wheel here, and that will very slightly adjust the angle, which is really nice. As for the job site table saw, you're getting a lot of those same features, but with some really nice quality of life improvements. Firstly, the way you actually move the fence on this isn't a rack and pinion system. There is this lever here, which you push down, and that will unlock your fence. You can then move it using the measurements on the front here to where you would like to have it, and then lock it in place by pushing that red lever back down. And I've got to say, I was quite worried before testing that this wouldn't be as accurate as a rack and pinion system. But the process of actually pushing that lever down does move the upper end here and pushes it all nicely into square. If you do need to extend the distance from the fence to the blade beyond what the table allows, then there is a little lever at the front you just flick over and that will allow you to push out this entire side of the table saw to extend that cutting capacity. And of course what this means is if you have your fence at the end of this extended table saw then you're automatically going to have this piece of the table saw supporting your timber. If however you need your tabletop extended but you want to have your fence say here and lock it in 
there is this dial at the top of the fence that you can spin, which will bring out this little supporting piece here, which I think is a really nice way of tackling that issue. And similarly, if you want to cut a particularly narrow piece of timber, they've also got a way to do that with this style of fence. On the back of the fence, there's this little system here that you unlever and you bring it around to the other side. You can then hook that onto the other side of your fence and this will allow you to push through narrow pieces of timber without them catching. But possibly my favorite feature about the JobSite Pro is the one turn blade raise system, which means you just turn the blade once to have it fully elevated to its top cutting position. I love that, that's so good. I've been doing this for like 20 minutes, I just love it. Something that has surprised me is even though the Compact is quite a bit smaller than the JobSite Pro, you're not actually losing out on a lot of cutting capacity. Both of these saws take a 10 inch blade and you're getting a total cutting depth of 81 millimeters. The total cutting width capacity, however, on the JobSite is 640 millimeters, which is just 20 millimeters more than its smaller counterpart. You do, however, notice a big difference in the tabletop area. On the JobSite Pro, you have 22 centimeters more in the depth which is very useful especially if you're cutting quite a lot of board materials and of course it wouldn't be a saw stop review video if i weren't to mention the main feature that has made saw stop so successful and that is the blade's ability to detect stop and drop the blade under the table in under five milliseconds let me show you how it works first i'm going to raise the blade and then i'm going to switch the saw on by flicking this lever here you do need to wait for this light to go green and the red light below it to stop flashing red then you're ready to make your cut Oh my god, that was terrifying. Oh, what? I can't actually see where it cut the sausage. Well, I've got to say that was my first time doing that and I am full of adrenaline right now. Let's have a look underneath the insert plate and see how this all works. And I will just point out that I do have the table saw unplugged from the wall. There's absolutely no chance this is going to go off whilst I'm changing this. I wasn't entirely sure how to actually change the brake, so I did check out the videos that are on the Saw Stop YouTube channel, which were really helpful. And in the end, I did this in about five minutes. So you can see here how the blade dives into that brake mechanism. And this is the bit that you do actually need to replace every time that you set one of these off. These do cost £85, but SawStop have said that if you send them the brake system and they detect that it did save your finger, then they do actually send you a replacement for free. So as long as you're not the type of person to just test it for the sake of it, and you are using it legitimately, that's awesome. And if I do a side-by-side -side comparison of the brake system that has been used versus is a totally brand new one you can see how it takes the impact to totally stop the blade in its tracks very impressive stuff i did remove the blade after testing and as far as i could tell the teeth were damaged beyond repair i did reach out to saw stop about this who advised that about 50 percent of the time the brake would not damage the blade and you could simply repair it or use it straight away and whilst that is incredibly impressive, I have been testing these saws out for a couple of weeks. So here's five annoying things that I've found with the saw stop table saws. Number one has got to be just how heavy this compact table saw is. At 31 kilograms, it's almost 10 kilos more than your average table saw. And saw stop don't sell a rolling stand for it. What's that all about, Saw Stop? Come on. And on the flip side of that, the job site is only available with a rolling stand. So if you are planning on getting a table saw to have it in a fixed position, then you're gonna be wasting money on the stand because you don't have an option to buy it without. Number two is the fact that the technology that drives the saw's ability to drop the blade when it detects human skin is the very same technology that can be triggered by peculiar materials. So if you do find yourself needing to cut some damp wood, then be aware that you might set off that brake mechanism and in those instances you might want to engage bypass mode the instructions of which are conveniently printed on both of these saws number three is the amount of time that you need to wait for this saw to activate if you're like me and you're a little bit impatient and just want to get going waiting five seconds feels like a long time 
And the best way I have found to avoid having to wait that five seconds is to leave the activation system engaged and just use the main on and off switch each time you want to make a cut. Number four is the fact that the blade is so tight against the zero clearance insert plate that's included that it actually does touch it and it has chipped away at the paintwork on the top here. Not ideal. And the last annoying thing has to be the fact that the compact doesn't have the one turn blade feature, which by comparison after using it, just feels like a lifetime before the blade actually gets to its full height. And here's five things that I absolutely love. Firstly, the JobSite Pro actually has this micro adjuster, which allows you to make very slight micro adjustments to the angle of the blade. Secondly, has got to be, and I know I've said it before, all of the built-in storage on both of these saws. I mean, honestly, the fact that you can fit everything in here and it's nicely stored away for when you need it, is a really nice feature that I've not seen done anywhere else. Number three is the fence on the JobSite Pro actually has this really nice low friction cover on it. I really like that. Number four is how set back the blade is to the front of the table saw. If you compare this to the majority of other table saws, you will find that you've got about an extra inch to an inch and a half of in-feed support, which is just a really nice additional safety feature for saw stop to include. And lastly, I really like that the underneath of the JobSite Pro actually is made out of this hollow mesh to allow all of the dust that falls through the blade into the bottom of the table saw to actually escape. And this will help with dust extraction if you're using it. And with all of that being said, now it's time for that ultimate question. Do I think that either one of these table saws are worth the money? Both of these table saws are now available in the UK and the compact is going to set you back 900 pounds. Please remember though, that does not come with a stand. The JobSite Pro does come with a rolling stand and that is going to set you back 1,500 pounds. And look, we all know that that is a lot of money to spend on a table saw, especially one which accessories are on par with any other table saw that you would expect for about a third of the price. However, neither of these are just a table saw. The technology within them that prevents you from cutting your finger off means that the entire saw has to be engineered from the ground up. If you were to take either of these table saws apart and compare them to say the DeWalt table saw, the guts of them would look completely different. And it is definitely that safety technology that sets these saws apart from their competition. And because of that, I am going to say yes, I do think that both of these saws justify the high price point. As for which model I think you should buy, I actually think this comes down to how often you need to move the table saw. And that's essentially because only the JobSite Pro right now comes with a rolling stand. So to be clear, if you are buying a table saw to leave it in a static place in your workshop, or you're planning to build it into say a workbench, then my recommendation is that you buy the compact. You're still getting all of that safety technology that makes the saw stop so valuable. If however, you need to move your table saw around, perhaps you're on a job site, as the name suggests, then the JobSite Pro is going to be the choice for you. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I am going to be building a workbench for both of these saws. And you can watch me do that by clicking here next. Until next time, happy building.